Welcome to the session on Changing Climate and Emerging Microbial Infections. Myself, Dr. Dhanya Kesi from the Department of Microbiology, St. Mary's College, Thrissur. So, coming to microbes and infections. There are trillions of microorganisms such as bacteria, viruses, fungi, etc. that normally harbors the body of animals. These microbes collectively are called as the microbiome or microbiota. It is an essential component of immunity and thereby health. It is a functional entity that influences all physiologic and metabolic aspects of the particular host organism too. So they are beneficial. At the same time, there are a few harmful microorganisms, less than 1% of all microorganisms that are capable of invading the host body and they will cause infectious diseases. What are infectious diseases? These are disorders caused by the growth of invading microorganisms. These diseases can be spread directly or indirectly from one person to another, either through direct or indirect contact with the patient or through insect or animal bites or through contaminated food, water, soil or plants etc. These infectious diseases are there throughout history including the plague of Justinian and the Black Death in the 14th century, etc. And they remain to be the major causes of morbidity and mortality in the world. There are emerging microbial infections, which are never heard before diseases, and there are re-emerging microbial infections, which are infections of the past, almost forgotten due to known occurrence during recent times. So, what are emerging infections? These are infections that are rapidly increasing in incidence or across geographic range almost mysteriously. These are novel diseases or previously unrecognized diseases already existing in nature. As per WHO, an emerging disease is one that has appeared in a population for the first time or that may have existed previously but is rapidly increasing in incidence or geographic range. Anthropogenic causes, it means due to human activity or climatic changes results in the emergence of these infections. Examples are HIV or AIDS, severe acute respiratory syndrome SARS, Ebola hemorrhagic fever, Nipah virus encephalitis, Handa virus pulmonary syndrome, coronavirus disease 19 etc. So what are re-emerging infections? Re-emerging infections are forgotten infections that reappears. The re-emergence may be when public health measures are relaxed or abandoned or a climatic change which may bring up an otherwise extinct disease causing agent or a climatic condition by which an otherwise known infectious microbe become infectious. Example for re-emerging infections are diphtheria, tuberculosis, etc. There are seven categories of disease emergence or re-emergence. Category 1. Microorganisms that were not known previously which cause new diseases. Examples are SARS-CoV, MERS-CoV, Zika virus, novel coronavirus, etc. Category 2 are agents, microbial agents that were known previously but now cause new diseases. Examples are Handa virus which caused respiratory distress instead of kidney disease. In category 3 are microbes which are known to cause disease previously but the incidence of disease is currently increasing in a region. Example is whooping cough caused by Bordetella pertussis in the US, diphtheria in Russia, etc. Category 4 includes new and often more virulent strains of a known pathogen that cause disease. Examples are Vibrio cholerae, which cause epidemic diarrheal disease, Clostridium difficile, which cause Clostridium difficile associated disease, etc. Category 5 are microbial pathogens that cause disease in a new geographical location. Examples West Nile virus, Chikungunya virus, Dengue virus, Ebola virus, etc. Category 6 consists of microorganisms of animal origin that infect humans. These type of infections are known as zoonoses. This includes animal associated microorganisms that are newly able to infect humans. 
Examples are influenza virus from birds or swine, Nipah from fruit bat, MERS corona from camel, etc. Category 7 includes microbial pathogens that have acquired the ability to resist the effect of antibiotics. Examples are multi drug resistant tubercle bacilli, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, vancomycin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, amantadine resistant influenza A virus, etc. This image shows various emerging and re emerging infections over the world. So, what are the factors which influence the emergence or re emergence of microbial infections? There are two distinct stages in the spread of infectious diseases. The first step is the introduction of a new infection to a host population. And the second step is the establishment within population and dissemination from this population. Regarding the first step, that is, introduction of a new infection to a host population, it is estimated that there are approximately 1,400 pathogens capable of infecting humans, but only 500 are capable of human-to-human -human transmission. Among these 500, only fewer than 150 have the potential to cause an infectious disease. So, there are a number of influences, ecological changes or human interventions which provide opportunities for these pathogens to emerge and gain access to human populations. For the second step in emergence, that is the establishment and dissemination, there are again few factors responsible. Ecological changes and globalization which give the microbes opportunities to travel along with us that also very quickly. Anthropogenic changes are another important factor that alter the environment and increases our exposure to pathogens. So, the emergence or re-emergence of infections are influenced by various factors and their interactions such as extrinsic, social, economic, climatic and ecological conditions and intrinsic human immunity. So let us focus on the role played by climatic conditions or more precisely climatic changes. Climate is defined as the average state of every day's weather condition over a period of 30 years whereas weather is the state of the atmosphere at a particular place and time. What is a climate change? Climate change occurs when any change in Earth's climate system results in new weather patterns which may last for at least a few decades or maybe for millions of years. Climate change may be either due to the internal variability or due to external forcing. Example for internal variability is El Nino Southern Oscillation and example for external forcing is changes in solar output. Human activities also change Earth's climate through global warming. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change forecasted an increase in world average temperature by 2100 of about 1.5 degrees Celsius. There will be changes in the annual rainfall patterns globally also. So let us see more about climate change and microbial infections. Climatic factors influence the emergence and re-emergence of infectious diseases at various levels. From directly affecting pathogen maturation and vector reproduction to altering vector or host habitats by altering human nutrition etc. A climatic change may either bring up an extinct disease causing agent or an otherwise non infectious microbe may become infectious. In other words, climatic changes tip the ecological balance and may trigger epidemics. Changing climatic conditions are anticipated to have an impact on the incidence and distribution of vector borne diseases and water borne diseases and also zoonotic diseases. There were geographical regions where the prevailing climatic conditions resulted in absence of or low incidence of particular diseases due to absence of vector habitat and restricted transmission of vector borne diseases. But climatic changes altered the situation as can be seen from the malaria outbreaks with the ENSO cycle in South Asia and South America, dengue fever outbreaks with El Nino and La Nina events in Asia Pacific region. Rose River virus disease with interannual ENSO variations in Australia, etc. 
Let us see few examples of diseases whose occurrence increased with increase in temperature. Examples for such vector-borne diseases are Dengue, Malaria, Japanese Encephalitis, Chikungunya, Filariasis, Yellow Fever, etc. In these situations, the vector is a mosquito. In the case of Schistosomiasis, the vector is water snails. Leishmaniasis, the vector is sand flies. Lyme disease, the vector is ticks. Oncocerciasis, the vector is black flies. Coming to waterborne infections. In the marine environment, warm temperatures create red tides or blooms of toxic algae which increase the shellfish poisoning and neurotoxins. Salmonella and cholera bacteria proliferate more rapidly at higher temperatures. Salmonella in animal gut and food while cholera in water. Recent reports showed that Vibrio vulnificus, a flesh-eating bacterial infection spread by handling or eating contaminated seafood is supposed to be due to significant increases in the sea surface temperatures. The effect of rainfall on infectious diseases is more complex. For example, in tropical and subtropical regions, heavy rainfall and flooding may trigger outbreaks of diarrhea, whereas at the same time, very high rainfall can flush out mosquito larvae, thereby reducing such vector-borne diseases. The next type is zoonotic diseases. These are naturally transmitted from vertebrate animals to humans and it is estimated that 70% of the emerging infectious diseases in humans of last 30 years are zoonotic. Examples are anthrax, tuberculosis, plague, yellow fever and influenza from domestic animals, poultry and livestock and HIV, Nipah, Ebola, sars corona, etc. from wildlife species. Zoonotic diseases are spread either through vectors or non-vector wounds such as through air or water or food or through direct contact. Among the many factors that lead to the emergence of vector-borne zoonotic diseases, the major one is the climatic change. Also due to climate change, there has been a rise in the distances species typically migrate and these changes in migratory patterns resulted in modified interactions between wildlife and humans. These changes in climates and ecotones has a crucial role to play in regulating the emergence and re-emergence of zoonotic diseases. So, it is very evident that climate change has a potential impact on emergence of microbial diseases. Augmented efforts are to be done to address the problem. It is important to identify the origins of emerging infections and predict future risk so as to enable early detection and response during outbreaks. We should be able to prevent or make the emerging infections less detrimental through enhanced global surveillance and control measures and improved diagnostics and research. Thank you for listening.